So in this video, I wanted to take you through who the emotionally unavailable person is most easily attracted to in relationships and the specific features that drive attraction at the subconscious level and why somebody tends to be really attracted to somebody who might have seemingly opposite traits from themselves. Now, if you're not already familiar, we talk about all types of attachment related things. And this dismissive avoidant attachment style is the emotionally unavailable partner. And that's who we're referencing in this video. Now, dismissive avoidance are one of four major attachment styles or love styles, if you want to think of it that way. And the dismissive avoidant tends to be the person who's most closed off, commitment fearing, and often goes through a lot of emotional neglect growing up, which translates into them sort of neglecting their own emotions and not knowing how to really get in touch with them. And obviously translates into them being more avoidant and emotionally unavailable to other people. So what kind of person is this type of personality or love style attracted to? So we have a few major traits to cover here, but first I want you to know what drives attraction at the subconscious level. One of the biggest features that drives attraction at the subconscious level is people who express our repressed traits. In other words, if we tend to have some sort of trait that we're not in touch with, or if we've disowned this trait over time, then essentially what happens is we're really drawn to people who express that trait, especially if we have positive associations to that trait. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that as a child, you grow up in a family where you don't feel like you can really get in the mix of communication because everybody's really loud and strong and over empowering or overpowering. And let's say as a result, you kind of feel shy and quiet and you sort of fade into the background because you're not sure how to deal with that type of environment. Well, as a result of that, you might come to believe about yourself that you're not very outgoing and that you're not very good at, you know, taking up the center of attention and taking up space. And so you might consider yourself a shy person and you may cope and deal with that overpowering environment by kind of withdrawing a little bit to sort of create space between yourself and that kind of environment. And essentially in doing that, you disown a trait. You come to think that, okay, well, I'm, I'm not that, right? I, I'm having a hard time being that. I'm not an outgoing person. And so what happens is you sort of disconnect from even trying to build that trait within yourself. And it gets sort of buried into the depths of your subconscious mind. Now, again, going back to this idea about attraction, one of the things that drives attraction the most is when people express your disowned parts. And if we just look at that through like a, a biological lens for a moment, what you'll see is, you know, from a survival perspective, if you were out trying to survive in the wild and you pair up with somebody who's really smart and you're really strong together, you have a better chance at surviving. And so there's this idea or concept of trait variety that drives attraction. People who express your traits that you feel like are repressed and you're out of touch with, you tend to feel very drawn to. Now, there are two other major factors that also drive attraction. One thing is that we tend to be attracted to what's familiar to us. And one of the biggest things that, that's familiar to us is people who treat us how we treat ourselves. Um, so for example, if you are constantly dismissing your needs, you actually might be really attracted to people who also dismiss your needs, believe it or not. Um, and then the third major factor is if people meet our unmet needs, again, we have this, this sort of form of chemistry or connection that can take place. But for the sake of this video, I really want to focus on the trait variety part. And so this is what we're going to hone in on the fact that, you know, emotionally unavailable people or dismissive avoidant attachment styles, they tend to be attracted to people who are number one, very supportive. And when people are very supportive towards them, they sort of look out for them. They're emotionally available towards them. These different things, these, this is, we're putting this all under category one here. Um, these tend to be things that really draw the dismissive avoidant person in because they are attracted to their repressed parts. They tend to really struggle to be supportive in the relationship to themselves because they don't know what their emotions are, what they're feeling. They're really out of touch with that. And so when somebody is really supportive emotionally to them in that way, it actually really draws them in in those initial and early stages of dating. Now, make sure you stay to, towards the end of this video because at the end, we're going to talk about how the same things that we start off by being very attracted to in, in our relationships and dating situations over time, unless we actually build trait harmony and we learn to integrate some of the traits that we're so drawn to in others, what ends up happening over time is those very same things we were initially attracted to cause the most resentment and detriment to our relationships long-term. So they tend to be the things that actually break us apart. But we're going to get to that in, the, in a minute. So the first thing we'll say emotional supportiveness, 
Um, the second trait that tends to be very valuable and, and draws people in is that warmth, that sense of like warmth and caringness. Because again, dismissive avoidance have kind of gone cold in the relationship to themselves. So when we go back to that idea of trait variety and us pairing up with people who have different traits expressed than us, that tends to really drive attraction. We tend to be really drawn into those different things. So you'll see that be another major factor. Now, by the way, before I go into trait number three, and then the, the sort of most exciting and important part of this video about how these very thin things can drive us apart much later on, um, if you have access um, through this video, if you use the link below to a 14 day free trial to a course that's all about how to master the dating stage of relationships. It really talks about like what attraction is at the subconscious level, how it affects us. It talks about the different attachment styles or love styles, and it talks about connection and understanding your own needs and standards so that you can stop settling for less than you deserve. Um, and so that you can find people who actually meet your needs and you feel that sustained attraction too. Um, and you can check that course out for free for 14 days. It's more than enough time. That course will give you a breakthrough in an hour of like how to do dating more effectively, more effectively, and just to feel more fulfilled if it's something you're struggling with. Um, so you can check it out using the link below. And as a bonus, you also get access to every single course at PDF that you can check out for that 14 day period if you want to sign up. And this closes in just a couple of days. So um, very limited time and, and uh, limited availability for that 14 day trial. So the third major trait that dismissive avoidance or emotionally unavailable people tend to be really attracted to is people who are selfless. Now, this often represents that dismissive avoidance kind of have this deep idea that everybody's out for themselves, that like we have to be selfish to survive. And where this comes from is usually in their upbringing. What was modeled to them is that everybody was out for themselves emotionally and that we couldn't really lean on each other emotionally for support or care. And so they tend to have this belief. And then when they see somebody model to them something other than that, people who are thoughtful and considerate and selfless, it tends to really draw them in again because it's these things that they've been missing and this part of themselves they've, they've really disconnected from. And so here's where it gets really interesting. And it's that when we are attracted to things in other people, those initial things things that we are so drawn into, um, specifically traits. If we don't learn to have healthy trait integration, so like start expressing these traits in relationship to ourselves and actually build these traits up in ourselves, the very traits that we are attracted to in others will eventually take a turn for the worst because wherever we don't have healthy trait integration, what actually happens is we go through this cycle of infatuation and being like, whoa, I'm so excited and drawn to this trait and it's so attractive. And then eventually it actually turns into very deep frustration, anger, resentment, um, all these different things. And I want you to watch this for a second. So let's say, for example, that you are at first attracted to somebody who's very selfless. Okay. Let's say you are the dismissive avoidant or emotionally unavailable person. You're really attracted to the selflessness in others. Well, very later on, especially when we hit the power struggle stage of dating and relationships, what we see is that that very initial thing, that that selflessness tends to be something that drives the dismissive avoidant crazy. They tend to feel like, hey, just focus on yourself, take care of yourself. And I'm taking care of myself. And sometimes they actually come to perceive that initial attraction of selflessness as some something that makes them feel um, like their boundaries are infringed upon. Um, sometimes they feel like, oh, you're, you are acting selfless, but then you feel like I owe you later on and they get upset or triggered about that. And you'll actually see this with every single attachment style. Often anxious preoccupied are so attracted to maybe the laid backness of the dismissive avoidant, but then later on they're like, hey, this laid backness is you not trying in the relationship and it's so frustrating and that's what they end up becoming resentful around. Or if you find yourself being attracted to somebody who's kind of like freedom seeking and fun loving, maybe later on you feel like they're not taking the relationship seriously enough. So these initial things that you see that you're really drawn into in that initial attraction phase, if you don't learn to integrate these traits healthily within yourself, it actually translates into these initial things that you're drawn to are going to sort of like be your Achilles heel in relationships later. So it's really important and valuable to pay attention to these different things. 
and to learn to integrate traits. Um, and what I mean by that is that we have to come up with strategies to healthily learn to be these things in the relationship to ourselves. So for a dismissive avoidant, they need to learn to be supportive and warm and healthy in the relationship to others because, or to themselves, because that translates into them being emotionally available in their relationship to others. But if they don't have that, eventually what they'll feel instead is the supportiveness and warmth that I'm getting from other people is making me feel overwhelmed. It's making me feel like somebody's getting too close to me. I feel too vulnerable. And if I don't have that emotional bandwidth to sustain it, Originally, it's attractive, and later on, it scares me. And so you'll see how these different cycles unfold. So anyway, this is specific to the dismissive avoidant. If you want to go deeper, um, you can actually check out our shadow work course for free using the same link below too, which talks all about how to actually integrate traits that you've disconnected from or repressed. Um, and then, of course, you can check out our um, dating, how to master the dating stage course, all about attraction, connection, and understanding your own needs and standards in dating and relationships. Um, so thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this video, I make literally a daily video here. Um, would love if you joined me and subscribe to our channel and our community. And um, if so, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.